Well, have it, yeah. <laughs> a lot of things can go wrong, but hopefully mm -hmm. something works. <laughs> Alrighty, shall I just get going? Um, yeah, very punctual, let's eh? Give yeah. it a minute. Give, let's give it to one or two yeah. minutes, yeah. We'll, we'll give, give some time for the stragglers to make yeah. their way in, yeah. <laughs> um, while we're waiting, um, are you guys, Erich, hi, and Reggie, hi, I don't know, um, Julian, hi there, are you guys, um, Oops, you've got an echo. Are you all here to chat about the change log? No, I actually just logged in. Um, I was doing something at QGIS this morning and uh, just said that there were access every Friday and click on this link to see it. So I clicked on it. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so welcome. I can talk about the change log. <laughs> okay, cool. I'll, I'll listen to what you have to say. Yeah, yeah. Okay, great. <laughs> Just a correction, it's every, the last Friday of every month, so, and not every, every Friday, yeah, but yeah, welcome. You've got an You've got echo there, too. I think it's coming off, um, Eric's mic. Oh, I see. Da -da. Okay. Well, why don't we just we um, so why don't we just dive in and we'll record everything and then um, those who join late can just join uh, can chat as they want to and those who miss it completely can watch the video. So why don't you introduce yourself first, Charles? All right, cool. Uh, welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Charles Dixon Paver. I'm from sunny Durban, South Africa, working with Todd. Cartoza and uh, it's kind of become my job to <laughs> uh, kind of lead the charge in terms of maintaining and uh, keeping the, the QGIS ch change log up to date and um, make it very nice for end users to be able to um, see all the new features and uh, things that have been added to QGIS um, for each of the releases. So. Um, yeah, um, I'm here to kind of give an overview of the process that we go through in terms of taking the, the documentation and information that is given to us by the developers when they introduce the changes and, and additional features into QGIS and then how we restructure it and process it to get it into a more user-friendly format where you know, end users who aren't necessarily developers can understand and get a very nice overview of what new features were inter introduced and how to use them. So um, I'm kind of just going to follow the agenda that we set forth in the wiki page for this uh, crack day. <laughs> um, so uh, here we kind of looking to get everybody exposed to the workflow that we, we put in place and then get some commentary and feedback from anyone if they have any suggestions on how we can do it better um, and how uh, new users can contribute as well and you know who would be willing to help us out um, because QGIS development is kind of 
just speeding up rapidly and we're just introducing more and more features with each release. Um, so it becomes quite a challenge for volunteer workers to find the time to restructure um, each of the posts and, and uh, features that are merged and get a nice change log entry from them. So the first thing I'm going to do is go through the, the process documentation. So we created a wiki page for this. Um, you can probably see on my screen here, there's a link for it there, but I've got it open already. It's on the, the QGIS wiki for the QGIS project on GitHub. And it's just called changelog workflows. So if you're looking for it, you'll find it there or you'll be able to use the search function. And it goes through the general workflow that we use to get everything into the, the changelog uh, management system. So the first part of the workflow is where uh, the changelog maintainer, which is me, <laughs> um, uh, is added to the QGIS community group and is given triage rights. So obviously, if you're just a, a contributor, you don't really have to worry too much about that. But if you were to become the um, new changelog maintainer, then obviously you would have to contact someone within the QGIS community and be given access to the repository so that you can um, make the necessary changes um, that we'll go through in this workflow. Um, then on, a, on an ongoing basis, I kind of monitor um, each of the, the pull requests that come in that are tagged with the feature label. So um, we've got a link to, the, this is just kind of a, a search query. So you, if you go into the project's pull requests and you add in this, the search query that it's an open um, pull request and has a feature label, it'll come up with all the currently open features that haven't been yet merged into the master branch. Um, a lot of them, for example, this one does not have a changelog tag yet. Uh, so before it gets assigned a changelog tag, we need to go in and review the information that the developer has provided on this particular feature. For example, with this particular pull request, um, it's got a lot of backend um, information, but it doesn't necessarily have um, details on the, the user interface side of things. So before we assign the changelog tag, um, we would preferably like to get a screenshot for the changelog um, displaying um, what options are available and how to access it and how the, the functionality works. Um, additionally, we might ask the developer in the comments here, you know, um, could you please explain in more detail what each of these um, functions that you've introduced and, and methods that you've introduced do so that we can write a, a decent changelog entry for it. Once um, that's all good, we can assign a, a changelog label in the, in the labels feature. And that will mark the the feature as ready for um, uh, in, introduction into the change log if the code reviewers are happy to merge that feature request. So what we've asked um, for the time being is that uh, the people who are merging pull requests and reviewing code do not merge new features into the master branch until such time as the change log maintainers have assigned a change log tag or label to that pull request. Um, let me go back to our workflow so I can refresh my memory. <laughs> Apologies. Um, so yeah, once we once we are confident that the feature functionality is described well enough that we can include it, um, this just describes how we add the change log uh, label. Um, then it will go through for review. Um, for harvesting. So we have another link for that, which I think is in the wiki, if I can just find it quickly. Oh, that's that's the ones ready for harvesting, but you can review it with the, that link. Sorry, I'm just confusing everyone here for a second. Um, so here you can see all the, the pull requests that have already been um, marked with a change log label, and then uh, the code reviewers have merged it into the master branch. So these are pretty much all features that have been 
um, introduced into for, uh, for the next version of QGIS. These are all new features that have been added. Um, so in order to harvest them, we will need to go to the, the changelog uh, management site. That's changelog.qgis.org. Um, you, well, I'm signed in at the moment, but in the top right-hand corner, you should be able to create an account if you don't already have one. Um, you won't automatically be able to edit the changelog entries. You will need to request administrative rights from Tim. Um, that's Tim Sutton. Uh, you can request uh, edit access from uh, any any of the available channels, really, uh, the mailing list, the Telegram channel. Um, I don't know if anyone else has any other channels that we can use to access. Um, or Tim, I don't know if you want to put something in the chat that you know says how to contact. Or, or they can just pop me a message, like a message at tim at qgis .org or tim at oh, Okay. Yeah. So, um, and then once you get uh, uh, admin rights for editing the changelog entries for each release, the changelog versions are managed at the bottom of the of the front page here. You'll be able to go. So for the next release, um, will be three point one six, and we can go and review the changelog for this version of QGIS. So. Part of my duties will be to take these elements from um, the QGIS uh, repo and bringing them into um, the changelog site. So obviously not everyone's gonna have to worry about doing this part of the workflow, but for demonstration purposes, we'll go through it now. Um, we've got a little function here, which will import the pull request from GitHub. Um, so this will, bring up a menu which allows me to bring in everything that is labeled with change log that is closed. And then I will bring it into the general category. So the general category is pretty much, there are some items that will be labeled general, but for the most part, you'll find that just uncategorized is, uh, that that's the general category. Um, we can have a discussion later about, you know, if there's a better way to manage this. Uh, going forward, but for, for the time being, we're just bringing everything that's new into the general category. So we'll import it and it'll run for a bit and it'll kind of just go scrape through GitHub and bring all those entries into here. So if I go to the bottom of the general category, you'll find one of these will be in here as the next entry. So here, yeah, statistical aggregates should be there. Oh, there we go. Statistical aggregates. Now this one is uh, not actually merged. It's just gone stale and that's why the issue is closed. So we don't need it. So I do a bit of a review process on these. Um, this one in particular, we will delete because it's not a new feature. But add XY page offset expression, you'll see this has been brought into the new change log entries. So I then go into this particular um, pull request and I know it's been harvested already. So I will now need to add the change log harvested tag and then remove the change log tag. And once that's been applied, you'll see that if I refresh this page, that'll disappear. So when we run this tool again, um, this little import script at the top here, this uh, that particular entry is not gonna come in anymore. So that's the purpose of the change log tag and the change log harvested tag. It's just for us to identify which ones have been added and which ones haven't. So I'll need to go into each of these Add the change log harvested tag and remove the change log tag. You just have to bear with me for a second because I don't want to miss any. <laughs> so I'm just going to do it all now. Um, fortunately, there's not too many.
that's that. So now you can see that all of our closed and merged pull requests have already been um, taken into our QGIST change log. So this is our change log site and our change log feed. And um, if we want to view the um, I can probably just easily do it this way. The default is there. And then if you use this filter on GitHub, you'll be able to see all the new features. Um, obviously, you can filter by release as well. Um, but these are the features that have been introduced for the next release. So all of these things have been put into that change log feed on the change log site. So where we need community input, um, I'm obviously managing the import, uh, the inputs and, and um, maintenance of all that um, kind of stuff that's happening uh, behind the scenes. But once it's in the site, we will need to kind of tidy up the way that um, a lot of these things are presented. So for example, I think here, um, there's a lot of functionality built into GitHub that when people perform commits or pull requests, they can put stuff into the the um, the headers and the titles and the labels. You know, this will automatically apply a feature label because they use the square brackets uh, as syntax for a commit. So um, we need to go in and edit this so that it's no longer um, kind of designed for showcasing um, the functionality of a new feature for developers, but more for end users. So um, a lot of the developers don't have time to go and kind of dress up their, their new feature um, uh, contributions. Um, it's not necessarily the prettiest or it doesn't have the nicest screenshots. Um, a lot of people, their, their native tongue is not English, so they might not have the most kind of eloquent um, language. And we just kind of need to tidy up everything and get it into a format that's suited for um, this change log management system. So uh, once you've been given edit rights, you'll be able to, when you logged in, um, this little toolbar will come up at the top of each entry. So I'm just gonna go through editing one of these for the time being, just so that um, you can get a feel for what's, what it entails. Um, so the first thing I'm going to have to do is save the image to my local disk. Uh, I think that's it. Yeah. And then I will go edit the entry. And then you'll see that there's a whole bunch of kind of extraneous um, artifacts <laughs> left over from the pull request and the commentary on it. So we're going to change the, this is obviously for 3D um, uh, functionality. So we want to put it in the 3D category, but you'll need to read the, the um, feature request before <laughs> in order to understand what it actually does before you can edit the entry. So we're going to assign it to the 3D features category. Um, we can maybe dress this up a little bit more by changing it to directional light support for 3D. Um, we, one of the most important things is to remove these header tags. So um, if we go have a look at QGIS change logs, my spelling is not so terrible. When we go to the user change logs. This is where we, all of our, our efforts are going to end up on, on one of these pages, you know, the visual change logs for QGIS. So there's a lot of uh, indexing and, and um, kind of links that go into building this page. So if you leave header tags in, the problem is that each what you know, you're going to get a whole bunch of nested um, hyperlinks in this table of contents view, which are artifacts from leaving in these header tags. So it's very important that we remove any headers from our items. This title at the top 
the feature title that will automatically be signed. I think a uh, header layer three or something. I'll probably check here. What are you? Yeah, so it's a header three. So this will automatically be assigned a header la layer three. So having a, an H2 tag inside here doesn't make a lot of sense at all. <laughs> um, then we can go through and kind of dress up the, um, the, the entry a bit, uh, depending on, uh, you know, some developers are a lot more eloquent than others and some describe their functionality a lot better than others. So for the most part, it's just kind of going to depend on a whole lot of other factors, what quality this is already in. Um, but one of the main things that we need to do is to edit the media entries. So we kind of need an, an image thumbnail um, for each entry. Well, not it doesn't, it's not strictly necessary for each entry, but the majority of uh, the entries will have you know, an, a, a screenshot or an animated image showing what the new feature does or, or showed in action so that people can get an understanding of what what was actually added to the program. So um, we need to upload that. Is it there? So that's why I downloaded the file to my local disk first. Um, I think at this point, the system only supports one image though. Oh, oopsie. Just removing it. Um, so, you know, some people might include multiple images and um, additional animations and that sort of thing. So we don't want this image to be an animated GIF or anything like that. Um, we, we really want it to be a, a still screenshot. So if um, we actually don't mind it. We don't mind if it's an animated GIF, that's also fine. But we just want to have one, like, one image that like really typifies the feature. Um, Sorry to interrupt. <laughs> oh, so, yeah. so it can be animated. Yeah, it can be animated GIF um, or GIF, depending on which you prefer. Um, but it should be really like something that correct, <laughs> that shows off the um, it should show off the feature well. Yeah. Okay. And then Tim, for for multiple um, media sets. We, yeah, so then, then the rest should be in the in the body of the um, in the body of the description. So just in line. Um, there is you'll see down below. There's a there's an option to put a video link in as well. So if somebody's made a YouTube uh, clip or something for that, you can just link it from there. Um, and actually, even the, the the animated GIF GIF where we now um, it, it's almost in a way preferred because when it goes onto the QGIS website, um, then you, you're not going to have, well, you, you're going to be able to see kind of like a nice um, little, some, oh, sometimes the things are hard to understand just by looking at a st static screenshot and having a, a small animation might help people to understand what the feature does. So. Okay. So, yeah. Um, getting back to where we were, I can't remember where we were. <laughs> but, um, yeah, we need to add the media in, in, in the correct format and attach it to this entry um, in the correct manner, which involves downloading it and then re-uploading it. Um, so that's the list entry. We have to be careful not to delete the whole thing. Um, and then if there are additional media entries to include, we can include them in line in, in this paragraph, essentially. Um, and there's a whole bunch of other kind of tags here, which might be included in this information. So for example, this is a, a contributor who, who hasn't been, uh, th this functionality wasn't through a corporate sponsor, but often the developer will just have a note saying, um, this feature was funded by this agency or whatever the case is, but they don't, you know, it's not using, a, there's no standard for the formatting and there's no standard for how it's presented or what information is included, whether there's a website or not. So we kind of need to manually go in, in those instances and grab the agency that funded the um, implementation and, and the development of this feature um, and stick it into these fields. So we just massage this 
kind of entry into a format that's that's presented by this web form so it's, it's not crazy complicated <laughs> but you know it is kind of a lot of uh, legwork and keywork and you've got to go and, and read through each of these things and make sure that they make sense and that they describe the functionality w well um, so for example here there was a youtube video added so we'll have to add it into the video link and you know this is all developer information that's included in github it's not necessarily part of the change log so we can remove that remove that because that image has been moved into the major component we kind of standardize the formatting um, we do need to come up with more formal standards on and and like more um, you know, strict templates for how everything is formatted so that everything can look a lot more uniform throughout but at this time uh, at this point in time we're kind of working on a best effort and this uh, this workshop is the the first step <laughs> in many to come for kind of getting a, a much better um, workflow in place in order to make sure that the change log is as uh, contains some, as high integrity material as possible. Um, so this uh, list item as well, that's talking about testing and functionality, which isn't really part of the change log. So we can remove that as well. It's more for, it's like developer notes. So we don't really need it. Um, the, the grammar and everything here seems to be fine. So we don't really need to touch up anything there. It's more just um, a matter of semantics and syntax and, and removing extraneous content. And Tim, do we have a, a, a spelling standard? You know, American spelling, British spelling, does it matter? For yeah, obscure <laughs> historical reasons, we use American spelling. Because um, Q just started in America. I guess it's an homage to Gary Sherman. But <laughs> so yeah, American spelling everywhere. Okay, so yeah, when it, it, a lot of us are going to try and, and put in British spelling, but we need to change it. <laughs> okay, and then that's pretty much it. That that um, you know we make the adjustments for each entry, we submit it to the site, um, and now you'll see that that feature is no longer in this general category. It's been moved to the three D features category, um, and here it is here. And you know we've got the embedded YouTube video, and we've got um, you'll see when we remove the element from the middle, um, uh, from the the paragraph content, and and attach it. It comes up in this little sidebar here. And um, I, I don't know is there um, I don't know if anyone has any questions or if that kind of makes sense. I don't know is much more in terms of editing each entry that needs to be explained but basically um you know I've, there are a lot of entries <laughs> as you can see here you know um, you can see just by the the scroll bar okay when i jump to outside of general <laughs> not like 70 percent of the pages is uh, these it, entries haven't been manually edited so uh, all they, they've all been kind of vetted and, and processed and uh, enough of, they have enough detail to make sense and to, to structure a decent change log entry out of them. Um, and they've all been merged into the, the main branch, but there's just, there's a lot of work involved in finding time, um, you know, to, to uh, maintain all of these uh, on your own. It, it gets a bit wild. <laughs> um, what, what was the phrase, Tim, uh, teamwork, teamwork makes the dream work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So at the moment, I mean, Charles is doing just about everything. And um, it would be great if we could have other people just helping with the cleaning up the entries. I mean, you'll make sure that the entries arrive in the queue here, but going through those entries and even often you need to understand them quite well before you can describe them or improve the descriptions. Um, it'd be great if we could get some help from in this room or also, from the broad internet. Yeah. 
also if people do have um, questions about the functionality, you know, if you if you read an entry and it doesn't, um, you don't quite understand exactly what the feature does or how it works, I would have had to have understood it in order to include it. So you can always contact me and then, you know, we can work through it together or we can put you onto another entry and I can clean that one up <laughs> or whatever the case is. Um, so I, I don't want people to get stuck or confused. Uh, you must just reach out to me and, and we'll work through it. Um, and then I think I've kind of been through these steps that are listed within the, the changelog workflows on the wiki. Um, it does go into detail and describe each one of the entries. Um, once, I think the goal with this project, sorry, I'm jumping around here. The goal with this project is to get this entire page, which is now about 30% done. <laughs> you know, we want it to be 100% done by the time the release rolls around. So, you know, on the date of the, the next release, the change log is ready for publishing. Um, there are a couple of additional steps which go into editing this page beyond just these entries uh, as listed in the workflow here um, notable bug fixes uh, this is a separate list which is managed by another maintainer um, and he'll manually introduce that into the page um, and i think the the change log main maintenance team who are maintaining those entries don't have to worry about it too much um, this just describes you know the, the more the minutia surrounding the adding uh, labels within the the github workflow um, and just what states you know each pull request is is sitting at um, and yeah we, we would love to see contributions for you know conventions whether it's you know um, I suppose I should include that we should use American English as a standard <laughs> here as well. But, you know, there's a lot of things, whether it's the way lists are formatted or, you know, what casing to use in certain instances. We, we ideally want to get to the point where anyone can just kind of, you know, have a checklist of things to, to run through and know exactly how to format things so that they look standard. And it's not something, you know, it's a lot of overhead that we don't really want to push onto the developers because we'd rather... The developers spend their time developing new features than worrying about you know formatting <laughs> um, the description of that feature so i think that's kind of the goal of, of this kind of exercise and where we need help um so yeah that's pretty much it from the, the demonstration side of that. um uh, i think you know if if anyone has any advice or wants to you know I'll, I'll open the floor now for discussion people can can give input on how they think we can manage things better or differently or who wants to get involved or um anything else like that i don't know uh, tim should we put a, 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 a section in this wiki page for people to jot down if they're interested in, in being contacted as yeah it could be good otherwise they could just contact you directly if you want to just put your I mean, you, I'll, I'll have it the, yeah. the recording of the screen. I've got your contact details there, so I can just contact you directly. We're going to put this um, session on YouTube as well, so you can come back and watch it there. But yeah, if you want to ed edit so, the wiki, yeah, that would also be fine. Yeah. Um, I also made a summary of what you were describing now. And if you look in Telegram, you can maybe pull up the image that I just put in there. It's just, I just made like a little flowchart thingy to show all the steps you were just describing. So if you like me and like pictures more than words, then you can go and look at the picture that, <laughs> that we've made. Cool. I think I'll, so, I'll yeah, probably um, stop the recording that I'm making here and then um, we can uh, just have an open discussion if anybody wants to, to ask anything. Yeah, does, does anyone have any inputs or questions or anything?